Today we're going to be learning about spices. How do you store them optimally? What spices should you pick up for your kitchen? And where should you buy them to save quite a bit of money? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Ethan, a home cooking nerd who likes to find better ways to cook and share them with all of you. Timestamps are in the YouTube play bar for all the various sections so you guys can check out and jump around. But first, let's start with a little bit of spice knowledge. From Harold McGee's On Food and Cooking, he describes herbs and spices as categories of plant materials used primarily as flavorings in relatively small amounts. Each spice has an aroma compound that gives it its characteristic flavor. The compound that makes fresh ground pepper smell and taste like fresh ground pepper versus the aroma compounds that make oregano smell and taste like oregano. Now typically we buy spices as whole or ground, and it actually makes a huge impact on the flavor life of each spice. Whole spices will keep well for a year or more, while pre-ground spices will start to degrade in flavor after just three to six months. You see, the spice compounds are highly volatile and reactive, meaning they will be altered when exposed to oxygen, moisture in the air, or energy sources like heat and direct light. When you compare ground versus whole spices, the fine particles of ground spices have a large surface area and lose their aroma molecules to the air much more rapidly. To test this, you can do a little experiment. Take a couple of peppercorns and give them a sniff. Now ground some fresh peppercorns and give that a sniff. The increased surface area should give off much more smell, but that's only while they are fresh ground. If you leave that pepper sit out in the open air for 24 hours, it won't be nearly as fragrant. Or if you've ever had ground pepper that's been in the cabinet for years, that stuff basically has no flavor left and this is your cue to throw out any old ground spices that have been hovering in the cabinet for the past several years. So now that we know a little bit about spices, it's easy to understand how to store them. In general, we want to stay from moisture, open air, heat, and light. So probably the worst possible place you could store your spices is in an open bowl right by the stove with a boiling pot of water and sunlight streaming down. A good place on the other hand to store them is in sealed containers in a dry environment away from extreme heat and direct light. Now the most optimum storage for maintaining flavor life would be an opaque glass container stored in the freezer and then you let that container warm to room temperature before opening to use the spice to prevent moisture from condensing. Now I don't know about you, but watching spice containers warm up while I'm trying to make dinner doesn't sound too exciting, so here's what I do. I bought 24 clear spice containers on Amazon and filled them up with my various spices. I went with the clear ones because I like the aesthetic. It's just fun to see all the vibrant colors, variations, and shapes. However, because I'm using clear bottles, I'll be storing them in the drawer. I bought a bamboo drawer insert that pops them up nicely and keeps them organized. I place these in the drawer to the left of my stove so I have easy access, but make sure they sit on the far left of the drawer so they don't get much, if any, ambient heat from when the oven and stove are in use. This way I can quickly grab my spices if I'm set up with my butcher block, doing prep work, or if I need to add something quickly at the stove. So we've got the storing down, but what about buying them? Because if you aren't careful, the spice dollars can really add up fast. The question of what spices you should buy is completely personal. For example, if you're really into Indian food, there are countless variations of spices you could potentially pick up. But if you only make Indian food from time to time, maybe you only want to keep three to four core spices on hand, so they don't lose their flavor by the time you finally use them. For me, I've outlined this question in three buying categories for how I use these. Number one is absolute bare necessities. Number two is my top five used spices. And number three is the Pro Home Cooks kind of basic spice cabinet, which you can basically almost make anything. My absolute bare necessities are coarse kosher salt and black peppercorns. For purposes of cooking, salt is the most important ingredient for seasoning and enhancing the flavor of food, so I'm including it in this video even though technically it is a mineral and not a spice, meaning it's actually not going to lose flavor over time, and you just need to keep it dry, that's it. The first thing every cook should do is learn how to master salt and pepper. Salt alone is all that is needed to make amazing meals, and I'll link a couple of videos below that I've done about salting, but let's move to my top five spices. My top five used spices include cumin seeds, chili powder, turmeric, smoked paprika, and oregano. With just these five spices, I can make all sorts of dishes from Mexican cuisine, Indian cuisine, Italian, Mediterranean, and more. And if you're wondering why garlic powder is not on my top five list, it's because I prefer to use fresh garlic nine times out of 10, so I don't typically reach for garlic powder too often. 
Now let's add 11 more spices to what I'll call the Pro Home Cooks kind of basic spices. For me, these are bay leaves, garlic powder, sumac, dried dill, coriander seed, fennel seed, mustard seed, red pepper flakes, cinnamon stick, whole cloves, and cardamom pod. Adding these 11 spices, you can really transport your taste buds all across the globe with just a few pinches of that here and there. Now, even though these are the spices that I would say to pick up, I wouldn't suggest you run out and go get all 18 of them in one go as I did. Thankfully, this is a business expense. Instead, take a minute and think about what you wanna cook and maybe add an extra 10 to $15 to the grocery budget to pick up a couple spices. Speaking of, where is the best place to buy spices? Spices can quickly get expensive, especially if you're picking up those one ounce glass bottles at the grocery store that easily can run you six to $7 a piece. Multiply that by 18 spices and you were looking at well over $120. The first option is to find a store that sells spices in bulk so you can buy exactly how much you want and don't have to pay for the packaging. Another great and cheaper option that I found allowed me to buy over 18 spices weighing over 80 total ounces and it only cost me $72. The secret, Google International Grocery Store near you. I've lived in various places along the East and West Coast and have always had one within a 30 minute drive. And this one that I went to is actually only nine minutes away, so I'll be visiting much more often. They'll typically have a large selection of spices in bags and containers that are much, much cheaper than your typical big box grocery store. Additionally, you'll see a lot of cool stuff from snacks in the frozen section in the meat counter, so it's definitely one that you should just check out in the meantime. All right, everybody, so hopefully that gives you some ideas on how to buy and store spices to make them last as long as possible. And I've left a Notion page down below in the description that has all of these spices listed as well as the price that I got them for. So after being interrupted by that spam call, um, yeah, so I left a Notion page down below that has all of these spices listed with the prices that I got them for and the price per ounce. So if you guys are going to the grocery store, you can take that as a shopping list and a price reference point to know um, if, I mean, I think I got a good deal on most of these. But like I said, I'm gonna keep these in the drawer. They'll last a long time and I still have an entire box in here with all my leftover spices. It's kind of insane. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I'm planning to do a pantry basics video kind of similar to this about what I pick up. So if that's something you guys wanna see, Definitely drop this video a like and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.